chapter 14. Oh, recording in progress. Uh, okay, I am talking from Matthew chapter 14. Um, and in this chapter, there, there, there are, as we continue through our reading um, through the book of Matthew, this chapter has three very beautiful stories, right? Um, we, it, there are three beautiful stories within this chapter. And I hope that we can take something out of um, each of these stories at the end of today's uh, sermon. Um, yeah, and so I really believe as I was preparing this that God has something for everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm just here to bring the message, but I really believe that even if one of these stories um, resonate with you, even if one of these stories, um, you know, strike a chord with you, that you would be able to take that back to God and you'd be able to think about it. So we we see that in the story, the first story that it talks about is when John the Baptist is beheaded. Um, if you read the first first part of this book, of this, of this chapter, sorry, you will see there is the scene where Herod has captured, Herod has put John the Baptist under arrest, um, right? And he has put him in prison. And the reason why uh, John the Baptist is put into prison is because Herod had unlawfully taken his brother's wife, okay? It's not like his, uh, Herodias is, is the name of the woman, um, is, is his brother's a wife that he had taken for himself. And it's not as if she was a widow that it was lawful for him to take her, but um, he had taken her unlawfully and made made his brother's wife his own wife. And so here it starts with, with the sin, the king. There is a king who is living in sin. And what John the Baptist does is he, he confronts him. He confronts Herod and says, um, that it is not lawful for you to have her. So he confronts Herod and he tells him of his sin um, and confronts him with the truth. And it is because of this that Herod is kind of aggravated and, and Herodias, um, the woman whom he has taken for his wife, is also aggravated and they put, they put him in prison. Um, and later what happens is in the story, uh, as we know, uh, you know, Herodias' daughter um, performs a dance before Herod and his guests, um, and Herod in his excitement says, "Like anything you ask for, I will. I will. It'll be done for you. I'll. I'll give it to you." And then, um, the daughter, under the influence of of Herodias, her mother says that I want John's head, and so he goes and and he beheads John. Um, at first, he doesn't want to, but because he's scared of the guests around him, he goes and beheads John. So that is what we see the story start with, right? Um, yeah, this is what we see the story start with right now. Oh, sorry. Right now I'm getting a lot of uh, pings and requests. I don't know if I'm the host, but... <laughs> uh, so anyways, so this is where, where the scene is starting with. Now, what we can... what As I was uh, looking through this, what, what we can see clearly is... Um, you know, there is... There is, in this story essentially, there is two kinds of fear right on one side there is Herod who lives under the fear of man um, and is driven by the fear of man and on the other side we have uh, we have John the Baptist who who is driven by fear of God um, and um, yeah even as we go through this series today today's topics are mostly about fear and courage um, but I really want us to look at this is that Herod he he already is living in sin. He's compromising, um, but he's also someone who is he is as in this passage is shown that he's somebody who is wanting to really please his people, right? Um, wanting to please his people, he's afraid of the people. Um, even when he makes the the promise of like giving Herodias' daughter anything she wanted out of like you know his happiness. Um, when she says that, oh, she asked for John's head, he's actually, he's distressed in his heart. He doesn't want, because he knows that it is wrong. But he yet, he does it because he's like given that oath before his dinner, before his dinner guests, all right? And he's driven by fear of man. He's driven by pleasing people. He's driven by trying to keep everything in control, everything under his power. But on the other hand, we see the story of John the Baptist is so beautiful when we see the story of um, John the Baptist that this is a man who is 
who has fear of God in his life, okay? And, and because of the fear of God, he is driven by truth. He is driven to, to speak the truth, even in the face of difficulty, even in the face of adversary, even in the face of knowing that it might cost him his, his life. Um, he still stands for the truth. Um, and that is what, you know, this first story that I want us to really take away from um, is that this man, when we look at John, he is standing standing for the truth despite of the circumstances, despite of what the world is dictating him to stand by. Um, and a lot of times, even in our lives, even in my life, we see, I often question myself when I make decisions, when, when we do things, are, am I being driven by the fear of man or am I being driven by fear of God? Um, and a lot of times when we are driven by the fear of man, you know, our natural tendency is to, to please people, to say yes to, to everything, to, to agree with everything that the world says you need to agree with. But when we say yes to God, when we are driven by, you know, having fear for God, we say, you know what, I'm going to stand for the truth. Um, to say what is wrong is wrong because this doesn't stand aligned to the Bible. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to encourage us that often in times, uh, whether it's in our work or whether in our personal lives, uh, we find ourselves at this juncture of giving to fear of man or to fear of God. Um, yeah, let us be able to look to Jesus, to stand for His truth. Um, even in today's world, when I look around, even when I <laughs> read articles, when I look at even Christian videos, even when I hear sometimes Christian people talk, um, you know, and if it doesn't align to the truth, if it doesn't align to the Word of God, you know, God is sort of like as I grow in my relationship with God, He is He gives us courage to say, you know what, thank you for sharing, but like you know, this is what um, I agree with or this is what I disagree with. And to stand for the truth is sometimes often a rare commodity in our world today, um, because if you if you look at if you look at how our world is being driven, um, a lot of it is whatever makes you feel good, whatever makes you feel right is right for you. Uh, you know, whatever you think is right is right for you. But actually, that's not. What is right for us is what the Word of God says, what the Holy Spirit um, says, and how it aligns to the Bible. We know that the truth is found in His Word. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to encourage that, that regardless of what the world says, that we, we, we would be people who would be standing for the truth. Um, that's the first story that's going on over here. Now, the second story is about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Um, we will get to that towards the end. Um, I wanted to share a, a, a quick testimony of how um, it's sometimes, like in, in my own life, this played out recently. Uh, I think me and Michelle, we were going through, uh, over the last one and a half months or two months, we were going through quite a crunch period for our finances looking ahead for this year as missionaries. And, and we had been really been like, you know, waiting on, on certain uh, people who partners who have partnered with us to, to say yes and to know their decision to go on. Um, and, you know, there was a time of worrying because it was a, it was a long time that we had been waiting. Uh, but we, there was a time when we actually came together and we said, okay, what are we going to stand on? Are we going to stand on, you know, our fear of finance or are, are we going to stand on the truth of God's word that God is our provider? He is our Jehovah Jireh and he is going to provide. And we actually came and, and we fasted for a number of days and, and, you know, and we just said, God, we, we look to you. We don't look to man. We look to you. Um, you know, and God took care of us and God brought us out of that place um, and he provided for us. And so, that is something that that we often have to often choose to do in our own day to day lives is whether we want to look at our circumstances or whether we want to stand for the truth of what God's word says. Okay, the next story that I want to talk about before we go into uh, is actually the third story is the story that Jesus walks on water and we all know this story, right? We all know this story that um, you know after feeding the five thousand, he sends the disciples away um, at first. And in a boat, and the disciples are are going across uh, across the Sea of Galilee on a boat, and suddenly there is um, huge winds and, and storms that come, and it starts rocking the boat, and then it's and in a distance they see Jesus walking on the water, um, and they first at first they think oh um, it's it's a ghost, but then Jesus says do not be afraid it is I, um, and then he and then Peter uh, says if it is you Lord then can I you know like can I come and walk on the water with you? And Jesus says, yes, P 
Peter comes, walks on the water, but then he looks at the waves. Um, and then when he looks at the waves, he starts drowning and God pulls him out, you know. And then God gets into the boat with them. Um, and the disciples fall on their faces and, and they worship him. Um, so this story is something that that is that is well known to us um, all, you know. And it there is something beautiful inside of the story. Uh I when I was preparing this uh, for this message, this story, I actually <laughs> looked up a lot of videos on Sea of Galilee. Like, just like, is it possible to have like waves and storms in? Because of Sea of Galilee, it's not a it's not a real sea. It's more like a lake. Okay, if you if you look at the map, it's more like a it's more like a big lake. Okay, but it's not a sea. So I was thinking to myself, is this how how will this Sea of Galilee have storms and everything? Because it's like, and it's very below the sea level, so it's like in a valley of depression in that area. And so it is, is it possible? And then when I researched it, um, I actually came across videos. Um, there was one particular video in which was recorded in 1992, which had like tech. Technically recorded the most like stormy sea, uh, sea of Galilee scene. So like the waves as high as almost 10 to 15 feet um, were crashing onto the shore. And I was like, that is crazy. That Sea of Galilee. And I'm like that. And when I think about it, like if that is recorded, then then you know I was and that I was just looking through all of that, and I was just thinking of like trying to put myself in in the time frame of when the disciples were with Jesus. Um, this story, uh, to explain the story, I'll kind of share my testimony and maybe that will be helpful for us to follow along. Um, so uh, when, and as Tiffany was sharing about DTS, I remember back in 2016, all the way back, sorry, in 2015, all the way back in 2015, was when I had come to Hong Kong and my Aunt Caroline had first told me about DTS um, in 2015. And then she said that, and at that time, I had been working uh, in a corporate job in India, and I was doing really well for myself. Um, and she had told me about this DTS uh, because she felt my relationship with God like needed some work. <laughs> and so she, she told me about this DTS. And then I came back to India. I remember thinking, there is no way I'm going to do this, okay? This sounds absolutely ridiculous. Like, A, eh? It's not a real thing. It's not like you're doing a Bible seminary or something like that, okay? B, it's six months, which means I'll have to quit my job with no guarantee that I'll come back and get like like the same kind of like a good job, you know? Um, and, and all of these doubts in my mind. And I was like, and this is not even like a real degree, okay? It's like, it, it is a degree. It is a degree. At the end, Tiffany, you will get a degree, so please. But, it, you know, like I was thinking more on the terms of like, economic value like what value does it add to me because when we are in life we i i used to think like that right when I, I had i was out of my college i was doing really good in professional sector so whatever i did had to be of some value i guess like economic value or worldly value and all of these reasons in my head and i was just like no way there's it's not a bible seminary it's nothing da, 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 da. but i felt it kept tugging on my heart for some reason it was like god kept calling me and there was one time um, he spoke to me through this passage, uh, and when I was uh, contemplating of doing, and I was praying, and as as I asked, like, okay, God, I can't get this out of my mind. Why do you want me to do this? And I I I kept going back to this passage, and I I sort of like you know saw a vision where instead of Peter, it was me inside of the boat, you know, um, and I and I always share this in my testament. It was me standing inside my boat, and I can see Jesus on the water. <laughs> and I want to walk with him on the water, but at the same time, I don't want to leave my boat, you know. And it was at that time I realized something very, very beautiful from this passage, actually, is what is our boat, you know, what is our boat, what makes up our boat? Um, for me, uh, what, made up, what made up my boat was my educational qualification, um, you know, my plans for my life, uh, my salary, my job security, the reputation that I had uh, with my family in my village because I had such a good job, um, and all of that, like that was my boat. Now, please hear me out when I say that this does not mean that today we all quit. Like God has given us jobs for a purpose, but this is specifically for me. But God was showing me that I had built up like this boat in which I was safe, I was I was comfortable, and I was um, I was okay to do life in, you know. 
and all of these things like my qualifications my salary uh, you know my reputation and all of that and I was unwilling to step out even though I wanted to uh, walk on the water like Jesus but I was so uh, fearful of you know like stepping out um, and this went on for quite a long time for around two two and a half three months where I kept wrestling with this and and I finally one day I said okay God I'm I'm gonna follow you you know what I I surrender and I follow you and I, I can tell you honestly that was one of the first times in my life where I actually did something without a plan B I, I'm a sort of person who always and I don't know if I'm sorry if I'm speaking to the crowd but you know as people we always have plan A if plan A doesn't work plan B if plan B doesn't work plan C if plan C doesn't work then I don't know what right we we have sort of tears subconsciously in our mind as what to do. And this was the first time in my life where when when I said yes to doing a DTS and I said yes to going a totally foreign country, you know, quitting everything that I had set up in India so nicely and, you know, leaving all of that, it was like, yo, I'm actually stepping out of my boat and I'm, I'm you know, I'll, I'll try to walk on this water. Um, and, um, yeah, it was the first time I actually, like, I, I didn't have a plan B. And I, I just stepped out, and and here I am with you today. Um, what six years, almost six years later, <laughs> sharing this word with you. Um, it, this this sharing this time of sharing this time of sermon uh, would not have been possible if I hadn't said yes and I hadn't stepped out of my boat. Um, and all of the great things that God has brought. And it, it is not uh, like now that I see, it's actually like it's I don't see my missionary thing as a job these days. It's more like, you know, it's like a, it's, it is like a privilege for me to be able to, to walk with people, to be able to see people like Tiffany come in. Like I've, like over the years that I've been in Wyoming, man, I've seen so many students like Tiffany and all come in and their lives have changed drastically. And, you know, God is speaking with them. God is revealing. And it's so beautiful to see that, um, you know? And so, and yeah. And so that is what I wanted to, to share with you is, is, is what is your boat made of? What is our boat made of? And it's not like now that I've taken a step out of my boat, now I'm like constantly walking on water. No, we still, I still have to look back in my own life um, and constantly ask ourselves the question, what is the boat that, that I'm in right now? What is my safety zone? You know, and to be able to ask ourselves that question, um, you know, what is, what is safe? What is comfortable for us? What keeps us in fear of stepping out and following Jesus? Um, and it might be different for different people, but it is good to ask ourselves that question. Um, and yeah, and whether that might be fear of loss, whether that might be fear of the future, whether that might be fear of current circumstances with COVID and everything, um, you know, God is God is there. God is on the water, even on the water. Like you are, he 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 is like Peter is able to walk on the water. You know. Um, and so that is the question that I want to leave us with. What is your boat? Uh, what is the thing that you're holding on to? What is the fear that you're holding on to? Um, and, you know, one of these things, and it was this time that I had this revelation, because I've read this passage many times, but this time when I was preparing, I really had this revelation of, you know, Peter actually then, once he starts walking on water and following Jesus, he looks at the waves, he looks at the storm, um, and he, he starts drowning because he's like, you know, he, he, he begins to sink because he becomes afraid. He becomes fearful. Um, and that is such a, what, I don't know, that was such a revelation to me. It's because, like, I feel like sometimes, oh, now I'm, you know, outside my comfort zone. Now, you know, I'm doing this. But at the same time, even in those moments, like, there is fear. Uh, you know, f uh, like, I get fearful of certain things. And we start to sink. But the beautiful aspect of the story when I started reading this is, you know, what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. When we have a relationship with Jesus, he's, he's there to hold his hand out. Even in amidst of the times when we have decided to follow him and we are, you know, really going and saying that, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow you. I'm holding on to you for everything. Even in those situations, we are human beings. Um, even, even when we are all gung-ho for Jesus, you know, we will have failures. Uh, we will have disappointments. We will have areas in our life where we might fail. We might be weak at. But I just saw the beauty of, when I was reading this passage, the beauty of having a relationship with God is 
when we have a relationship with God, even amidst our failures, even amidst our most difficult times, even when we are sinking, whether it's sin, whether it's struggles, God is there. He's holding His hand out and he is, he's, he's going to pick us back up and he, we have to reach out for Him and He is there to pick us back up again. Um, and I just saw God's really compassionate heart in that when I was reading the story. And so even when we think that we are following Him, you know, and we have disappointments and we have failures, it's okay. Jesus is there. We All we need to do is cry out, God, help me. I need your help. Uh, and He's there to hold us out of the waves. Uh, and finally, I the, the last story, I mean, this is the middle story, but I, I wanted to come to this at the end, is Jesus feeds the 5,000, right? We see right before um, walking on the water, Jesus is, is, is feeding the 5,000. Um, and this story is, is, is beautiful because you see, when Jesus had started performing miracles, when he had actually begun his ministry, um, you know, uh, the Bible says, you know, the uh, 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 you know a city a city on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, like you know, if there is a light, you don't put it under under the bushel. You know, you, but it shines. And so people were starting to know about Jesus, and people were starting to follow Jesus, and crowds were starting to come to him. And there was this one point where Jesus uh, was 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 preaching, and uh, he was sharing, and all this crowd was behind him, um, and. Uh, towards towards the evening, what happens is the disciples um, are like, "Hey, so the they send them away. You know, could you send them away so that they can go and buy food for themselves?" Um, and then Jesus, Jesus has compassion on them. Jesus says, "Like they don't need to go. You know, like uh, you know, you give them something to eat." Uh, and the disciples are like, "Well, we only have five loaves of bread and and two fish. That's all we have." But God says, "Bring them to me here to me." And uh, the disciples bring it, and God blesses that, and He He multiplies that. Um, and then even at the end, you know, there were many leftovers. There, there were like twelve basketfuls of leftovers. Um, and it says that like the number, not counting the women and children, were about five thousand. Um, and so God provides. So God does this amazing miracle of multiplication, um, even when you know the circumstances didn't suggest that there was enough food for you know all of these people. Uh, and I, I really felt God saying us through this is like, even when we have little, God can do wonders. Um, even when we have little to show for ourselves, even when we have a little faith, even when we have, um, you know, very little of what we need, God can do wonders out of that. God is our provider. Um, and I really felt him saying that he is our sustainer. He is the one who, who sustains you. He is the one who sustains us, um, throughout these times. Um. And the beautiful part is that he is a provider who is compassionate. Um, he provides his provision um, and his providence is also driven by his compassion and his love for us uh, as his children. And so um, as I was praying this and I, as I wanted to, so, so today's entire sermon is, is about having courage in the face of fear. You know, God, like I want to end with this story because God is the one who gives us our daily bread. Um, even when we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we say, uh, give us our daily bread for today. Um, you know, it is such a beautiful reminder that God is the one who is our provider. He's the one who, who sustains us. He's the one who's going to give us what we need. Um, yeah, and so even as we go into breakout rooms uh, now, I just want to re uh, just re uh, retell you just the main points. Uh, the first is, you know, where where what are we choosing to have are we are there areas do we have fear of man or do we want to live under the fear of god uh, fear of god comes out of love and reverence for god it's not just a, a fear of him for him destroying but it comes out of respect it comes out of reverence but it also comes out of love for him as our father as his children uh, you know what does it mean to stand for god's truth even when the world is is pointing you the other way uh, you know what does it mean to stand for God's truth even when uh, you know you you might risk offending people uh, because you stand for God's truth uh, you know and the gospel will always offend people uh, no matter what and you can't please everyone all the time but what does it mean to stand for his word to stand for his truth even in the face um, of adversary even in the face of difficulty uh, the second point 
being uh, what is our boat made of you know what is what are the things that hold us back what are the things that we are fearful of losing <laughs> we are fearful of stepping out of um, in our own lives you know uh, and what does it mean to look at Jesus who's standing across the water um, and wanting us to come out and reach for him and the third point is that God is our provider he is our sustainer he is the one who gives us the daily bread um, that we need today to sustain our lives uh, despite of whatever circumstances that's going on. Um, yeah, and so as we go into, I guess, breakout rooms right now. Hello? Oh. Hello. Uh, okay. Sorry, you were the... There is a lot of echo. Um, yeah, and so even as we uh, we go into to break the rooms, um, okay. I just want you I just want you to share uh, something that stood out from this message to you. Okay, so we don't have to go into very deep theological questions, but something just one thing, just one thing that you you felt um, you know like was highlighted to you whether it's a fear or whether in some area that God is asking you to have courage um, whether it's truth of his word or your circumstances anything just one thing um, that you can share in your group um, and I, I I pray that you would give everybody an opportunity to share um, and if you can pray for each other that would be awesome so just one thing um, from this message that you would like to take um, and yeah, and please encourage each other to share and pray for one another. Yeah.
تشيك تم تشيك حلو Right, um, <clears throat> the rest are they are they in? Yeah. 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 Yeah.